In this video, I will explain the methods to get the data for different variables. The first thing is that we will click on the results menu. And then I will click on surface integrals. And uh, the first thing you can see is the mass flow rate from the inlet shell, inlet tube, and uh, outlet tube, and outlet shell. Okay, click on compute. You can see that the flow rate at the inlet of shell and uh, at outlet is almost, but it even is exactly same. And if I talk about the, the tube side, you can see it's a 0 0.001791197 is a 0 0.0019700891. It means that the mass flow is, is fully converged and uh, we have the conversion of mass at inlet and outlet of the respective parts. Then I can use area weighted average and uh, I can find out the static pressure at uh, these uh, boundaries. And you can see that the pressure and the inlet of the, because this, this is very, very small heat exchanger, that's why we are getting the below pressure. So all the pressure, whatever is developed at the inlet because of the velocity is lost in the, in the process and we are getting the zero pressure over here. But as we, on, uh, as we go on adding with the different components like the baffles, you would see that this pressure will rise. And now I will be looking for total pressure and for total pressure because it depends on mass flow rate and therefore I will use the mass weighted average. The static pressure depends on area. And the values of static pressure and total pressure you can compare that uh, at the inlet is a 0.13 and total pressure is a 0.15 at the tube it's 1.16 it's a 1.28 at the inlet of tube and respectively you can see the difference for other components other parts. Okay, you can also use the, uh, the surface integrals and you can also find out the temperature values. And this time I will be using the vertex average. Vertex means it's uh, like a node, it's a one point. And uh, these two conditions on these two boundaries, we have specified temperature by ourselves, 500 and 300 Kelvin respectively. But at the outlet shell, we have specified or we assumed the value for calculation purpose to be equal to, let me show you. At the shell outlet, the temperature we, we assumed was 350 and here is the 468. And at the tube outlet, the temperature we assumed was uh, 400 Kelvin. And here is a 367. So uh, it increased by 67 degrees as compared to what we, we provided as, a, as an analytical solution. And, and keep in mind that analytical solution has the various various assumptions, various simplifications. So it's not necessary that, that you get the same data as the analytical solution. We uh, So the same data should not be uh, directly comparable with the analytical data. But as we go on adding the different components, we get the Mori transfer and so these values will start to compare very closely. But not 100% but very closely. Okay, now I want to see the some uh, qualitative, uh, qualitative data that is uh, the various uh, plots. So let's say I want to plot the static pressure on the center location. So I will use the ISO surface. And before that, I want to display the mesh. So I want to create the ISO surface of constant X and uh, that is also on the middle location. 
and for that I will choose the surface of constant mesh and its x coordinate and click on compute so minus 0 0.02 is the, the menu radius a menu uh, diameter and uh, 0 0.02 positive quantity is the maximum diameter so uh, to total diameter is a is a 40 millimeter which is the point 0 0.04 meter so half is on the uh, uh, one side of axis and half is on the other side of the axis and I would keep the ISO value as a zero so this will create plane at center location and now from contour pillars first I will I will be drawing the static pressure and if you want to draw the mesh you can also you can also only draw the the outline so choose edges and then from edge type choose outline okay so this is the This is the inlet of shell, this is the outlet of shell and this is the inlet of tube, this is the outlet of the tube. And if we draw the velocity, so you can see that the initially the flow was uniform in the tube and then it start to develop the boundary layer. Here I, here I will be doing one thing is that I will reduce the number of bands from 100 to less. So I will first change the smooth to banded. And then from color map, color map options, I will choose the 20, 20 levels. In this way, you can get the better idea. And if needed, you can also draw control lines. And this is the control plot of velocity. And now I will draw temperature control plot. And he, this is a very important plot here. So you can see Okay, so you can see that we have the temperature variation. So the temperature variation is highest in the in the shell inlet and as it goes along so because it's a counter flow heat exchanger so the the shell flow is going in this direction and tube flow is going from right to left so it is as it is moving so you can see that we have the heat loss from the shell fluid and it is being gained by the flow from the tube and uh, if you take a look on the the thickness part which is the solid body you can see the how the the heat is being conducted through the copper. Okay, next thing is that I will be drawing the vector plots. And uh, for vector plots, again, I will choose the same things. And uh, x coordinate 45. But I have to vary some, some parameters from here. So first of all, I will choose in plane and uh, fixed length and change the scale first to the point 001 and if needed you can increase the its value but i think this is enough so here you can see that how the flow in the in the shell side is behaving so right now it's only one single plane so and it is striking on the tube side there's reverse flow here then the flow will go down uh, over the sides of the tube so from the two sides the left and right and also it will go in the forward direction and also you can see the separation on two sides and then again the interesting thing would be to look at the flow at the outlet and here the flow is rushing from all sides and it's going inside the the shell outlet okay the next thing i think the next important or interesting thing would be that uh, if i can draw the center line velocity in the tube so for that i will be making a one line and that line would be at the location because the flow right now i have to check where the flow is going the flow is going in the i think is in the x direction so let me 
display the axis so logo here and uh, i'm looking for the axis if i can find it yes you can you can you can put it from here so the flow is going basically is from from left to right and uh, it is in the positive z direction so therefore the x and y would be zero for uh, for the line creation and uh, because uh, we started from the shell inlet the shell boundary is on just on the origin so it is at the zero location so the tube was extended by 30 millimeter on the left side so 30 millimeter would be equal to 0 0.03 let me confirm 30 divided by 1000 so 0 0.03 and then we have the up to 30 330 millimeter so divided by 1000 is equal to 0.33 so 0.33 and uh, 0.03 and rest of the variables will be 0, 0. And click on create. And before we draw anything, I want to see the that line. So that line is here. I think we have that line. So that line is. Okay, why it is only up to here? It should be extending way beyond this, this point. So let me check. The Okay, this should be minus 0 0.03. Okay, now display this line, line number 47. And this is extending from the two sides of the tube. Okay, now I will be drawing the, uh, from results, I will draw the XY plot. And uh, I will be first drawing the the pressure pressure uh, uh, profile on this line that's along the center line of the uh, the tube. So the pressure is varying in this way, which is linear, which is very obvious. The second thing is the velocity, and uh, it is uh, like uh, going from from the inlet. This velocity is uh, so inlet is on this side okay so it is uh, starting from the point 0 0.016 or point between the point 0 0.014 and point 0 0.016 okay and it is ending at the point 0 0.03 okay so this is the uh, the velocity profile we have and previously we had the pressure profile and if you want to draw the temperature you can also draw it and let's put the direction at the x that is equal to 1. Okay, so temperature is varying in this way. So you can see that the we have the we are basically gaining very little temperature over here, not too much. Okay, so temperature gain is 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 pretty small. So it's starting from 300 and uh, I, i'm talking about the center line not the total pressure total temperature gained by the tube side i'm talking about the center line temperature okay anyhow so this is all about the post processing and you can add on on your own uh, anything you want to like but i i have uh, explained the method and how you can access different uh, uh, options in the post processing for results and uh, I hope this will help you. And the last thing which I want to show you is uh, drawing the path lines. So I will click on the path lines and uh, I will draw the mesh. This time I will draw only faces, all the faces. Okay. And uh, also I will go to the view and from here I will click on compose. And in the display, I will be displaying only these things. And uh, I will make it transparent. So that we can see the things, we can see the path lines from inside. And uh, I will be uh, injecting path lines from the two inlets. And I would be first skipping the maybe 200 path lines first. 
and once I'm sure that the, this will not make uh, any uh, rendering issue and this will not hang the, my computer, then I will uh, be releasing more and more fast lines from these two inlets. Okay, these are very little two uh, path lines we have and uh, I will I will be making the color based on the temperature. So now I will be skipping only 20 path lines. Okay, so you can see that the, the path lines are not uh, is not going 100% into the, the their respective domains. So I will increase number of steps from 500 to 1000. And uh, now I'll skip only five path lines. And now you can clearly see that how flow pattern, how uh, how the flow pattern is being developed in the in the shell and also inside tube. The tube tube pattern is very simple. But in the shell side, you can see the the pattern. And once we get the buffers, this will be very interesting. And uh, you can see that the flow is not going on this side. This is rushing from the from this side directly into the outlet. Okay, so this was all about the the post processing for uh, design one with a coarse mesh. And uh, the procedure for post processing will be same for all the designs. Uh, the next case would be the to create the two more meshes. And then I will be comparing the some uh, parameters like the temperature at outlet for three meshes.